back with Life Cycle 101, and this is part six. I want to continue on with the dynamic table that we started programming last time. And last time we got the subtotal row to add up using a simple script, cell two times cell four. And all that's doing is multiplying the value in the relative row, cell four, cell two. So as we add rows down the form, uh, each individual row subtotal or cell 5 is using just its relative brother cells, cell 2 and cell 4. And that's what that references. But now we want to do something else in this total field. We want to calculate all of the potential rows above it values and make a grand total. And so we've got this set to calculated read only, which is exactly what we want. We don't want somebody to be able to come in and change the value. We want this to automatically add up. And so we have calculated read only turned on. We go to the calculate event. And then we're still using form calc language. And this is going to be a little bit more of an advanced script. We want to use a function now. So in, in scripting, a function is a preset um, set of steps that you can harness without having to do all the math yourself. And this, the uh, function we want to use is sum. And a function normally in JavaScript form calc is denoted by a reserve word like sum and then parentheses. And within the parentheses goes your parameters. And so in this case our parameters are we want all the values of cell 5 in row 1. So notice we're in the footer row here right now we're in footer row cell 5. But that's not what we want to add up. We want to add up row 1 cell 5. And so we're going to put in row 1 dot cell 5. Now we have a problem. So when we have a form, a table in a form with repeating rows, what is actually getting repeated? Uh, the table header is not getting repeated. The footer row is not getting repeated. Only this row right here is getting repeated. And we know that because on the binding tab of this row, we set repeat row for each data item. And that's just another fancy way of saying every time we need an extra row, we want this row to repeat. We don't want footer to repeat, and we don't want header to repeat. Only row 1. And so now in our script, we have to reference that somehow. We have to say not just the first row 1, or row 1, 1. Actually, in this case, the first row 1 would be ordinal, 0 like that. So this would represent row 1, 0 would represent the first row 1 if we had just one of many. And we know this because if we come here and do a plus, what does it do? It creates row 1, 0 and row 1, 1. But in a sense, when we're adding rows later on at runtime, we are doing that. We're adding more row ones. And remember what we set up as. We set row one to add initially five. There's going to be five row ones initially. And then we didn't set a max, but we could. We could set a max at 10 or 11, like that. And what that means is row one can't grow past 11 iterations, or it can't instantiate more than 11 times. And so in scripting language, what would row 11 be if things are ordinal? And what does ordinal mean? That means 0, 1, 2, counting from 0. All right? And scripting languages normally count from 0. So what ordinal number would row 11 be? Well, that would be ordinal number row 10, right? It's the 11th counting from 0. But we want not just row 1 or row 0 or row 10. We want all of the row 1s. And so in form calc, the way you denote this is by putting a wild card there, which is a star. And so now sum row 1 star, meaning as many, as, as many times as row 1 duplicates, I want to add up all of them. And I want to add up, in particular, the cell 5 value. So I want to sum cell 5. But I want to sum cell 5 from all the instances of row 1. All right, and so let's see what happens now. Let's preview the form. Actually, before I preview it, I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to get rid of the script. And I'm going to hit 
preview PDF. And so now we have a total value. This was blank before, if you remember. And so we can start putting some values in here. And so 2 times 2 equals 4, and that adds down. Let's do it again. Let's do $30 here. 60 plus 4 is 64. And so this is going to keep a running total as we go through the form. And we can just keep on moving through this form, adding things up. And so that's how you do a sum a summation script. But we still don't have the ability to m subtract rows that we don't want or add rows. And so now we need to work on the script and those buttons. And this is just what I call basic scripting. These are not advanced scripts at all. These are the most basic scripts you can really have in Lifecycle. So for this, for the button scripts, I'm going to use JavaScript. And so let's do the plus button first. Change that to JavaScript. So what we want to do is we want to call a function. Like we did in the summation field, we called the, the function sum that time. Well, this time we want to call the function add instance. All right. And in JavaScript, you need to always put a semicolon at the end of your line. Now, the function must be called out of an instance of an object, or it must be called out of an object. And in this case, I'm going to go from the absolute reference. In other words, I'm going to go from the top all the way into where I want to add an instance to. So in this case, we would start here at form 1. Form 1. And I'm going to hit the period button. And what that's going to do is do the that period is called dot notation. Comes up a lot in scripting languages. And there's an easy, helpful, quick view that happens when you're using dot notation in JavaScript in Lifecycle. And so you can quickly go to the next thing you want. So I want to go form one, starting at the top, then main, and then hopefully you can guess where I'm going next. I'm going to table test. So dot tbl test. And then I'm going to dot again. Where am I headed? Header row cell one. Header row cell one. That's where I'm at. That's currently where I'm at. And you can see that right here. Form 1, main, table test, header row, cell 1. But that's not the, that's not the thing I want to duplicate. I want to duplicate row 1 itself. And so let's back this out again. Back this out. I want to go to row 1, add instance. But here's the problem. Row 1 doesn't have the add instance function. And that's because when you're referencing row 1 using JavaScript like this, JavaScript doesn't know which row 1 you mean. And remember back to when we were adding up the subtotal. During the life of the form at runtime, there can be multiple row 1s. And they count ordinally 0, 1, 2. So there could be row 1, 0. There could be row 1, 1 two, three, all the way up. And in order to do this uh, in JavaScript, we can't use brackets like this. In JavaScript, these kind of brackets denote an array, and we're not trying to call an array. And so what Lifecycle has done to get around this is it's created what's called the Instance Manager. And so if we hit the dot here, notice at the top of this list, there's all kinds of things in alphabetical order. But at the very top, you have a couple of underscore and then our rows, footer row, header row, row 1. That's called the instance manager. So this is managing this underscore row 1 is not referencing any particular row 1, but it's referencing all of row 1's. And I want to use that as my, I'm going to go ahead and erase this just, just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to use that as my, my next uh, object in my dot notation, and I hit dot again, and then look here at the very top, add instance. Now this is a very helpful little tool because you can read at what exactly this function does. It adds new instance of a subform or subform set to this node. And then it gives you the way in which you should call it. So you should be typing in the object name, which we've done here, form1, main, table test, and then add instance. That's what we're going to do now. And then the boolean value is optional. See, par parameter1, boolean, true, false. It assumes true. 
So what that means is if you just add instance like this and put brackets without anything, it's assuming you're putting the word true in there and you don't need to do that. So it's just add instance. Now what this does is it's saying I want you to find the object called row 1 and I want you to find all the instances and I want you to add an instance to that set of objects. In other words, no matter how many times this has been duplicated, you know, row 1, 0, row 1, 1, row 1, 2, add another one at the end. Alright, so that's that script. Let's watch it work now. Of course, we're going to save first. Well, wait a minute. Before I, before I preview my form, I've just noticed a mistake. I've put this script in the calculate event and that's not where it goes. For a button there is no calculations. I want to cut this and paste it into the click event. I only want this to happen when the button is clicked. I don't want it to happen immediately when the form opens and the calculations happen. That's not good. So remember to use the correct event and if you see this event, all these different events, some are grayed out, they don't apply to this object and then some have a star now that I've put a script in there, that's just telling me, oh, there's already a script in there. So I have that in the click event. I'm going to save that now and then preview. All right. Clicking the button now. And as we do, the form adds rows to it, to the table. Now, once we get to 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, it stops. It doesn't add anymore because we told it a maximum of 11 and, we, and we're not allowing it to go past that. But if we hadn't have told it that, um, then it would keep going all day. The reason I stopped at 11 is because I don't want the page to break. We're going to talk about page breaks at a later time. So right now, for our example, our simple example, we're only going to row 11. Okay, so we have the plus button scripted. Now we need to script the minus button. So let's highlight that, go to our script editor, go to the click event, and we're in JavaScript, and now we want to talk about how to get only one row removed, but particularly the row that we're in. So again, this all goes back to the whole idea of multiple instances, and so we, we need to declare a variable, and I'm just going to call it row num. I'm going to set it equal to a particular reserved word called this.parent.index. So what does that mean? In JavaScript, the word this is a reserved word for talking about whatever object we are programming inside, this is that object. It's a, it acts as kind of a programmatic pronoun, this meaning cell 1 in this case, cell 1 of row 1. But more particularly, cell 1, row 1 of row 1, bracket 0, row 1, bracket 2, depending on which row we're actually in when we click. Because remember, if there's 11 rows here, there's going to be 11 minus buttons. And if you only click, click one of them, you want that particular row to disappear. You don't want to click the button in the first row 1 and the 11th row 1 to disappear. And so this is an important word, this this dot parent. Okay, remember we talked about before relationships or relative references. This dot parent is parent is talking about the parent of cell 1. Who's the parent? This cell 1 is the child of row 1, but a particular row 1. In the case of a multiple instances, let's say we're in instance 0. This dot parent equals instance 0 of row 1. And we want to know the index of that. And what we're asking is, what is the instance number? If there's 11 instances of this from 0 to 10, we want to know the value of what instance we're in. So if we're in ordinal value 0 of row 1, this dot parent dot index would equal 0. It would equal 0. And so row num would equal 0. Again, we're always thinking ordinally. I'm going to put that in here in my comments. Think ordinally. That's important. If you don't, you're going to get confused about what number you're at. Okay, so this.parent.index represents the row we're in. 
All right, we're going to take that value and then we're going to do the same thing we did before with our add instance function. We're going to now remove instance. So we're going to go form one, main, table, test, row one instance manager, and then we're going to use the not add, not insert, but remove instance function. And then inside there, the parameter is going to be row num. That's the parameter we're going to use. So we're declaring a variable called row, row num, which is just grabbing what row we're in, and then we're saying, I want to remove that instance. I want to remove that instance. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's save it. And also here, another thing I'll just quickly note. There's a button right here that says check script syntax. This can be a lifesaver. Click that, and if anything r red comes up, such as this. So I have an if statement that's not got the closing brackets on it like it should. And there's not, it does not have a value in line four. So there's a problem there. It's saying there's a syntax problem. And sometimes you misspell a word, you do something, you make a quick JavaScript syntax error. This can save you from dealing with it. But this is a lifesaver sometimes. All right, so we're saving. And now we're going to preview. Now our minus button works. But we want to make sure it really works. In other words, we want to make sure it's removing the right row. Let's change these values to something big here. All right, so now we have these two values here. I want to remove, let's say, this second row only. And when I do, that one removed. Hello world still there, and the value's updated. So good, our button works. So that's simple scripting. We have four scripts in this form. And just for review, we have the summation script written in form calc. We have the multiplication script that makes the subtotal in form calc. And then we have the, the add an instance script in JavaScript that adds a row. And we have the remove instance script that removes the row. This being the most complicated script that we're going to even cover in this part of the series. Uh, Livecycle 201 or whatever uh, series I get to later, I'll talk about more advanced scripting, making drop downs do things, and if statements, and arrays, and all that. So start scripting, start from the basics, and remember think ordinarily and think about relationships between objects. That's very important. We'll see you next time.